you already know what are gear systems in gear systems a number of wheels with teeth around its rim are connected to one another and the rotation of one wheel is transferred to other wheel so if we define gears gears are a combination of wheel with varying diameters that is one wheel is smaller than the other and they are composed of teeth of equal sizes cut around their rim and the rotatory motion that is the motion in which a wheel moves is transferred from one gear to another you have seen that gear systems are used in all power driven machines like bicycles the gear box of your car and also in a pocket watch but gears are used not only for gaining speed or for showing you the exact time but gear systems are also used to gain in torque or to gain a turning effect now what exactly is this turning effect so torque can be defined as the force which th make things turn or rotate now suppose in a simple machine a motor is rotating suppose it has a very large speed of rotation but it has a very small torque then it cannot lift a larger load that is it cannot function properly that is for any simple machine to function properly it should have a balance of speed and torque so torque can be defined as the force which make things turn or rotate and it can be written as torque on tau is equal to force into displacement so if we consider in a gear system we have two gear wheels gear wheel a and wheel b so let us try to find out the force and the displacement which is acting in this gear system so in gear a the force acting can be written as fa and in gear b the force acting can be written as fb for gear a the the displacement or the perpendicular distance between the point of application of force and axis of rotation is given as d so d in case of gear wheel a will be from this point till here that is point of application of effort till the axis of rotation so if we consider the axis of rotation to be this then this distance would be the perpendicular distance between point of application of force and axis of rotation so this can be written as da similarly for b this distance would be db that is the distance from the point of application of force to the axis of rotation so for gear wheel a the torque can be written as force fa into distance da see here the distance da and force acting on gear wheel a when multiplied gives you the torque for a which can be written as tau a so from here you can understand force is equal to torque by distance now when gear wheel a is rotating it is transferring its energy or the force to the gear wheel b so the force which we apply on gear wheel a is being transferred onto the gear wheel b so the force acting on the gear wheel b will be equal to this so from this we can find out the torque for b so the force applied on the gear wheel a or fa is equal to the force which is being transferred onto the gear wheel b so if we need to calculate the torque for the gear wheel b or tb it should be equal to the force which is transferred onto the gear wheel b that is fb into the perpendicular distance that is db so we can substitute the value of fb as tau a by da like this 
So, like this. So, the torque of B, that is tau B, can be written as tau A divided by the perpendicular distance of A into dB. Or we can rewrite this as tau B is equal to the tau of A into dB by dA. Now we can see from this image that the perpendicular distance dB is much greater than dA. So dB is greater than dA. Therefore, the torque of B should be much greater than the torque of A. And this is happening because the force which is applied to A is being transferred onto B. The force is remaining constant. Therefore, the torque of B is greater than the torque of A. And we can rewrite this as the new torque. That is, the torque which is obtained by B is equal to the old torque. That is, the torque of the driving wheel into dB by dA. That is, the ratio of the perpendicular distance of gear wheel B divided by the perpendicular distance of the gear wheel A. So, from this, we can see that the perpendicular distance is actually equal to the radius of the wheel. So, dA is equal to RA or radius of wheel A and dB is equal to RB or the radius of wheel B. So, we can write that the new torque gained by B is equal to the torque of A into the radius of B divided by radius of A. So, RB divided by RA. Now, you know from your previous lecture by the principle of the gear tooth action, the ratio of the radius of the driven wheel by the radius of the driving wheel is related to the number of teeth. That is, number of teeth of driven wheel divided by number of teeth of driving wheel. And this is in fact the gear ratio. So, the gain in turning effect or torque of B divided by torque of A, that is how much we are gaining in torque, is equal to the radius of B by radius of A which can be written as the number of teeth of B, that is number of teeth of the driven gear by number of teeth of the driving gear, NB by NA. So, we can simply find the gain in torque as the number of teeth of driven gear by number of teeth of driving gear. So, we have successfully deduced the gain in turning effect in terms of the number of teeth of the gear system. Now, consider this. We have two gear wheels of equal radius and equal number of teeth. So, tell me whether this will gain in torque or lose torque. Well, since the number of teeth and the radius is equal in both of them, gain in turning effect will be nil. And also, B will not gain any speed either. But suppose A has a smaller radius than B and has lesser number of teeth than B then the gain in turning effect will be number of teeth of B divided by number of teeth of A. Since B has greater number of teeth, there should be a gain in turning effect, but B will be losing speed, but it will gain torque. Thus, when B has a greater radius and more number of teeth, it will gain torque, but it will lose the speed of rotation. This is the principle used by cyclists while going uphill. When they go uphill, they need to apply a turning effect or torque. In that case, they change the chain of their bicycle from a gear having a smaller radius to a gear having a larger radius and more number of teeth. In that way, they are losing speed, but they are gaining torque and this helps them to go uphill. 